More than two years ahead of the 2024 election, some progressive Democrats are already looking at the possibility of a primary challenge to President Biden. His approval of, has dropped about 13 points since he took office nearly one year ago, according to the Real Clear Politics average of polls. One of my next guests told Politico, quote, he's deeply unpopular, he's old as bleep, He's largely been ineffective, and I think he'll probably get demolished in the midterms. Let's bring in Corbin Trent, former communications director for Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, former national staffer for Bernie Sanders' past two presidential campaigns, and the founder of the No Excuses PAC. Also joined by Jammu Green, former Democratic National Committee chair candidate and founder and CEO of WeDefendTruth.org. Great to have both of you with us today. Um, Corbin, obviously those are strong words. Uh, what, what's, what's behind them? Well, I mean, for one thing, polling is behind that. We're seeing uh, yeah. my my version of the midterm outcome is not just my version. We're seeing right now that the uh, polls show the Republicans have a slight edge, and that may be getting worse. We see that Biden's approval ratings going down, and, and it's moving in the wrong direction. I think that what we're seeing right now is a Democratic Party that's done a whole lot for the American people, and then has largely been uh, unable to articulate what it's doing and what it's done. And I think that's a that's a real challenge. Yeah. And, and who would you expect those primary challengers to be, Corbin? I think if, if anybody, uh, you know, sort of traditional were to, were to pop up, then it's going to be a, a really wide variety of people. But, I mean, you know, you've got a guy that's pushing 80, right? Uh, there wasn't even a certainty that he was going to run for a second term when he first ran. So I think there's going to be, you know, if, if we see a midterm outcome where Democrats lose the, the House and, God forbid, the Senate, too, I think that all bets are off and, and we'll see the Democratic Party trying to go in maybe the different direction and, and, you know, sort of truncate its losses. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, Jammu, uh, Kamala Harris would be sort of the obvious choice uh, in most scenarios in terms of that go-to person. She's had some struggles. Um, PR-wise, and she's had a number of people who've left her team, seven of them, over the last six months. Do you think she is a, a viable potential replacement for President Biden, if that turns out to be the case? Well, first, Martha, I think we have to start with the reality, which is that there will not be a serious challenger to President Biden for the Democratic nomination. Point blank, period. Anyone who says or speculates anything different uh, is basically how we look at this down in Texas, all hat, no cattle. And so I, I just have to say to Corbin, like, you know, bless your heart. I, I understand that, you know, this is the one thing that folks on the far left and uh, far right agree with Republican challengers um, in 2024. They want this to be a story. It's not a story. We are seeing a record economic recovery. We are seeing uh, the Great Recession, as folks are calling it, is being driven, fueled by American exceptional exceptionalism, as so many Americans are starting businesses under the Biden administration. Yes, we've got work hmm. to do in 2022 to keep the House to keep the Senate. Yes, there will probably be fringe candidates who jump into the race, and that's going to be for name recognition, that's going to be for an attempt for relevancy, but there's not going to be a serious contender. Vice President right. Harris well, you're is talking not going about, to be you know, we, we have obviously some President pretty Biden. tough jobs numbers today, and the polling that Corbyn points to is real. Um, you, you know, you can say you, you don't care about polling, but the real clear number we showed is, a, is an aggregate of a lot of different polls that are out there. Corbin, what's your response to Jammu? She thinks you're all hat and no well, cap. I mean, I I, you know, it reminds me a little bit of when I heard people talk about how what they could guarantee is that Donald Trump would not be the nominee of the Republican Party. And we can't predict the future. We know that for a fact. Um, I don't, you know, hopefully, hopefully you're right, Jammu. Hopefully we'll see. Uh, we are in a great economic position, but we're unable, I think, to sell that to the American people. Well, that's not the sense that people are getting for whatever reason. And specifically on the economy, which I think we're doing a great job at as a party and as a nation, we're, we're getting beaten. I mean, I think, what, 56, 57 percent of, of people polled think that Biden's doing a poor job. So 
that's with record, you know, record stock market, record jobs numbers. It's, you know, and, and still we're trailing in, in people's minds. So that's my concern is, is what the American people are seeing so, and feeling. I, I'm curious what both yes, of you think. We I have get to tell a better this, story. Back, go back. Wait one second, Jamu. So Ted Kennedy ran against Jimmy Carter. I think there's some parallels uh, in this scenario. But I, I don't see a Ted Kennedy in, in the list of people that are sort of floated at this point, And we can put those up. Um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Stacey Abrams, Mitch Landrieu, uh, Cory Booker, a bunch of names on that list. Um, Corbin, do you, can you envision a scenario or a candidate who could create a situation um, which was a tremendously difficult situation for Democrats in 1980 where Ted Kennedy said, you know what, I don't think this guy can pull it off. I'm going to run against him. I mean, I can, I'm imagining a, uh, a presidential cycle like we had in 96 and 92 that, uh, where we had third-party candidates that allowed uh, President Clinton to win Tennessee twice. I mean, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in 22 and 24, obviously, but what I see is that we're not connecting. Right now, the American people are divided in how they feel about the economy. They're divided in how they feel about how we're handling the COVID pandemic. They're, they're in general, and I think that we need to do a better job of uniting this country. And for whatever reason, President Biden's not been able to do that to this point. I think one of the problems is that we've tried to align ourselves too closely with the Republican Party that has very little vision, very little agenda. I mean, you know, what, 13 Republicans out of 212 uh, voted for this bipartisan infrastructure, bridges, roads, uh, internet. I mean, you know, if you can't get behind that, what can you get behind? So maybe we'll see right, the, the leave it there. Democratic Party administration will kick it into gear and we'll we'll lead this country forward and mash it in 22. We'll see. Very interesting to talk to you both. And it's going to be a, a, a big midterm year. So I hope you'll come back. Corbin Trent, thank you very much. Jamu Green, thank you as well. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.